Hi Kules, hi Barca fans, Marc-André Ter Stegen, first team goalkeeper, has spoke just a minute ago about technology and about AI here in a Sports Tomorrow Congress. This is the complete conference of the German goalkeeper. My, my home city, my town, <laughs> which I really appreciate. And um, no, actually, of course, it's a big change, no? Like, uh, overall, because you don't speak the language, which is very important to connect to the people, uh, to connect to... Yeah, the people not only in the club but also uh, in the stands, uh, in order to understand what they are actually asking for. And uh, yeah, we as football players, we as probably every other athlete as well, has to perform. You know, like we have to perform on the field. We have to convince people by our style of playing. And I think it was from the very beginning a very good match. And. Uh, yeah, 10 years afterwards, I'm still here, I'm still uh, talking uh, to you. And uh, no, it's been a been a journey, and uh, yeah, I'm very happy that I made the step because it was also a bit risky um, by then because I was very young, and uh, it worked out very well. Yeah, actually, the the philosophy of the club mm -hmm. is already very set. So of course it modifies every here and then, of course, because also the style of playing changes a lot. But um, by then, of course, they, they only go for the players that actually work in their system and their philosophy. So, um, yeah, by then when I was in Mönching um of course I had a, I had a certain type of play, uh, a certain type of uh, how to present myself. Um, and I learned this from a very young age, actually, mm -hmm. without being conscious. Mm -hmm. And uh, I saw that it's very valuable for, for my style of playing and also for us as a team. And of course, until today, uh, it accompanies me in my day by day because uh, I can, I can uh, analyze situations in a different way because I'm, well, I always try to be um, able to, to play with both feet. So, yeah, actually this helps me a lot and I still feel it, uh, even 20 years afterwards, which is very nice. Uh, every year they try to make football better. Um, sometimes it's better, sometimes it's uh, maybe not perfect, but uh, I like the idea of adapting and always trying to find the best uh, way possible. Uh, the best example you mentioned probably, uh, with the VAR, that at the end, Maybe there were years we said like, mm, is it helping? Is it not? But uh, I think they're also trying to get it on a different level in order to make it even more accurate. Uh, they're finding ways. Uh, of course, there there are always doubts, but this is also technology. You know, like um, there will be a moment that we probably don't have to worry about anything. We just lay <laughs> down. Like, like we're just we're just and fine. machines work for us. <laughs> exactly. But uh, for the moment, also there's a bit the essence of football that. You don't take away the, the responsibility of the referee or the, you know, the linesman, but uh, yeah, you give a lot of intention also to help them, which I think for them it's unbelievable because we sit in front of the television, and me right now as well, <laughs> and I look at the pictures and the images and I'm like, wow, this is clear offside. And then of course we see yeah, five, six, mean. seven <laughs> repetitions, and imagine they have to decide it in a, in a second. Yeah. No. No, if he, if the lineman, uh, sometimes he's he's running, he's fatigued, like, and he has to still uh, lift up the the, the bank. So yeah, at the end, it's um, we we rely on this, and I think it makes it for them way way easier to take decisions and to take responsibility, which I think this is uh, very good for them. Actually, after the games, now we have uh, many different camera angles, and here and there, so it's very easy for us to collect all of them to collect all the, the images and then see also what you actually do, you know, how you position yourself. Uh, you get a lot of feedback also. You see percentages everywhere, like data is a big uh, big topic. And so, of course, you can analyze, you can also give it too much attention because sometimes it's not really, it doesn't give you an indicator if it was good or bad. But of course, definitely, you get some feedback of what you did. Um, but later on, of course, it's a lot of feeling, you know, that, that you see, okay, I have to uh, be very good in a profile in order to receive the ball, in, in order to play, to continue the, the game. And of course, we see maybe right now, we see, okay, um, he, he had a um, 
very good pass. He had maybe 10 times he, he missed it. But why did he actually miss it? And I think this is probably still missing. But everything which is attacking is very interesting because they analyze way more. Yeah. Even though in midfield, uh, in defense, you could also analyze a lot. But yeah, it's uh, getting interesting because everything is data, everything is, uh, yeah, they collect everything and out of this, they can make way more changes uh, for the future, which which I think is, is beautiful. And for me, it helps me a lot seeing the videos, seeing the, the analysis of the games uh, in order to make a step forward. And I think we did it since actually the beginning, now with more in images, but by then also um, analyzing every, every step I take. Mm -hmm. The mental, well, the mental part is probably the most difficult because sometimes also it affects many other topics that we probably or you don't see mm -hmm. that maybe surrounds a player that can be input from outside, that can be input due to problems in the knee, problems in the food, like whatever, no? So this is also mental state for me. So you have to actually have everything in one bucket and say like, okay, why actually this happened to you? And why would you get injured, for example? And in injuries, I think it's a very good example that uh, sometimes maybe you see this situation, you say, okay, it's clear, no? Like he, he made a weird movement, but maybe it's more than this, you know? Like maybe it's also training, it's um, topics that you have in the family, topics you have, it can be everything. And sometimes this is very interesting to, to analyze and then also to use that information in order to, to, pro to proceed and go maybe to, now it has a bit more, um, yeah, weight, I would say, uh, to a psych psychologist, for example, in order to uh, work on this, no? And uh, I think there are so many things that actually they have to work hard, uh, hand in hand, uh, in order to make a step forward. But uh, technology definitely helps, uh, but there's also one state that probably is better right now, for the moment, that it's uh, also hand from other parts. <coughs> right now I see, of course, way more importance also that uh, they're the same. We, we use every image we can actually get of my movements yeah. in order to make them precise, to make them better than maybe two weeks ago, because um, what you don't want is uh, that you start compensating, that something doesn't look natural anymore or it looks very different to the other other side. For in my case, it's, mm -hmm. you compare the side and side. No? And um, I think it's very interesting to see how people work with it. I see right now the, the recovery coaches that I'm working with, that they actually, they, they work a lot with it. They look at every detail in my movements and um, I see big differences also from, from one week or maybe even two weeks to now. Uh, this um, yeah helps me a lot and I don't have to worry about it. Yeah, yeah. No, because I, I at the end, I reproduce movements and I try to make it the best way possible. And they think about what they actually see on the images in order to, to proceed. No? Like, and in the particular case, possible. probably gives you more confidence, right? Because you have 100% more 100%. controlled scenario than yeah. others. Sometimes even in the moment, yeah. we talk about it. They, they film it and then they show it to me and say like, hey, look, this and that. Try to try to have a bigger impulse. Try to yeah. do this and that in order to get back. And as I tell you now, uh, two weeks before, it, it looked completely different to now, uh -huh. you know, because it's something that they were working on every day. And um, yeah, I mean, right now it's about being hard worker. Yeah. Uh -huh. and try to be as hard uh, worker as possible, and then um, yeah, get back in. That technology hopefully helps helps <laughs> accelerate the process. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, it's quite funny because you can do everything. everything. Uh, <laughs> because right now I'm uh, working with complexity. So oh, me too. I'm, yeah, and it's, 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 a lot. it's <laughs> so convenient. Because they have the sources. Yeah, yeah I think that's yeah. super fun. I, I really like it also because even my, my son is five years old. Imagine, <laughs> oh, imagine being with five years old, yeah. impossible. But now it's like you can invent a story the story he wants to listen to, like in, in you just put whatever he wants to listen to, the name of the boy that he <laughs> wants to, you know? and so the history gets like real for him. Yeah. And uh, you can put like values you want to implement, you can talk about respect, you, like, I think it's so natural and it's a short story and he's so happy when he goes to sleep and actually it's him inventing it. 
uh, with the help of uh, AI. And uh, yeah, with me, also the same. Every day, I think I, I have questions in my, in my, in my head. And I say, I will ask. You know? And then you ask and you get, a, you get an idea of, of whatever it might be. And um, also, for me, I was talking to my brother the other day because he's actually uh, working a lot with big data mm -hmm. and, and stuff and data to, to compress them and stuff and financial systems and it's, mm -hmm. it's very complex, mm -hmm. very complex. <laughs> and so you ask uh, AI and you say like, okay, um, what is this about? Or program this and that. And of course, he was talking to me like on a very different base then I will talk to him. You know, I have like these crazy questions sometimes, yeah. <laughs> but he has like made more profound ideas. Also, it makes his work easier even. Because yeah, he yeah. said like, hey, I can program something, and then I don't need to ask the maybe it's not good to <laughs> have a person that it actually belongs to. But uh, of course, he can skip that part or at least get an idea of what he needs, and then ask the person because it's very more pre like very yeah. precise afterwards and. Uh, I think it's so interesting that it doesn't matter which, like in which profession you are, it can give you input or it can filter information that later can be very valuable for you. Be just guided by this. Yeah, yeah. And I think Great. also there's an, uh, an emotional impact. I agree. Like if you invest into companies, uh, of course it's not only based on the data, mm -hmm. because for me now, uh, yeah, we, I invested recently in, in cyber uh, security. Mm -hmm. And I need to say, for me, of course, this is one topic, but then also later on, the people that uh, execute actually the, the work and, and the people who are involved, they have to have a profile, you know? And the profile is sometimes even more important than actually the the the, the topic we're talking about. So, yeah, I, I think we have to keep it in balance because also on a human-related you know, base that I think there are also more important things than just the data, but it can help you and it can guide you differently. I think there's always a bit of risk, no? Like if you don't take risk at the end, you you, you won't get any rewards. You know? And um, I appreciate the people that that are excited about their project. Mm -hmm. As I told you before now, that I think there's an emotional decision also from my side that uh, I talk to the people, I get a feeling for the person, I see what they do, um, and at the end you see an excitement in the, per in the person or not, and you see if they have like the knowledge about the topic you you, you ask for, you know? mm -hmm. and well, at the end, uh, I think it has so many inspiring ways actually to, to start building your own thing, mm -hmm. that uh, maybe, maybe you will fail, maybe like if we talk about many others that, that now they are very known for yeah. their the, the risk they took by then, because maybe it was very uncertain if it would ever go this way. And uh, sometimes it's, it makes sense. Sometimes you say like, mm, it was unlucky, mm. but you also have to understand why you actually failed. Was it a mm. fail or an error or whatever by yourself? Was it something that maybe it was an influence of the global situation? Like maybe mm. it was COVID by then or and something that you cannot control. So. Exactly, the are topics that you can't really control, but you have to be very honest in analyzing it. Uh, but I'm, but I'm sure that, yeah, if you take risk, it always uh, has a reward. Um, even though you don't see it at the moment, but maybe you see it long term. You don't have a big coffee. So uh, yeah, I have some topics I'm interested in, uh, into, and uh, I try to also understand many many procedures in a company. Yeah. I try to understand why they're actually taking the decisions. Um, and um, yeah, I try to be part of it, no? yeah. because sometimes it's a journey. And sometimes it's tougher times, sometimes it's really good times. Uh, maybe sometimes even people don't see how tough or mm -hmm. how good the situations are. I can't really put them in place. But um, yeah, I try to understand the, the, the moments we are actually living in. And uh, well, I have interesting topics for myself, uh -huh. like coffee, for example. <laughs> and uh, then I have also topics that I that I found, find very interesting in cyber security with Stoy. Um, but yeah, it's uh, yeah, it's something that also guides you through other topics that is not only football. And I like to spend my time also on this uh -huh. because I see that I'm learning a lot of the processes in the company.